Hi everyone and welcome to the forecast for the upcoming new moon in Cancer which is going to happen on the 10th of July 2021. So as always I'm going to take you through the solely lunar themes um, that are going to be active for the next two weeks because of course with my forecasts uh, we are talking about the full waxing moon cycle so that runs from new moon to full moon. Um, so that's just worth bearing in mind um, you know when it comes to um, you know time periods and things. So this particular uh, new moon is, is really quite interesting. It obviously comes off the back of last month's uh, full moon in Capricorn and you know so this is the kind of polar opposite balancing energy that we are we're kind of experiencing and of course as always new moons uh, begin new cycles so let's get into the forecast and see what, what uh, we can look forward to. So for those of you who are learning astrology or who like a quick summary cheat sheet of moon cancer themes you're in luck. Um, so here we have it. Um, as you can see, many of the themes revolve around things like um, self-care, nourishment, home and belonging, um, breaking bread with others, um, our nearest and dearest, and also things like unconscious habits, gut instincts, and our kind of self-protection mechanisms. That's that's uh, that's a big one. Um, I mean, one of the things that, that I think is really important to know about Moon and Cancer is that this is the position of where the moon is domiciled. So this is where the moon feels at home. This is the sign that is ruled by the moon. And um, as such, it, it kind of amplifies um, what what would ordinarily be, uh, you know, just, just your sort of average new moon. Um, so in a way, it's quite interesting. It's almost like... Um, a super moon because of course you can't have a super moon of new moon so this is kind of like a supercharged new moon if you like um where you know lunar themes are going to be uh, maybe a little bit stronger than usual um but i think one of the key themes that we're going to see coming up in other aspects of this particular um forecast are things like um uh, unconscious habits gut instincts and protection mechanisms, um, you know, learning the difference between our kind of knee-jerk reactions and our kind of unconscious biases on one hand and our intuition on the other, there is a difference. Um, and it can be quite helpful to be able to discern the difference because it can help us to get clear about what uh, what is kind of motivated by um, unfounded fears on one hand and then what is information coming to us from our kind of higher self or, or our guides on the other and then uh, the other thing that's important is the theme around moon cycles and ebbs and flows so you know cancer is, is considered to be quite a moody sign and that's because of the waxing and the waning of the moon you know emotions kind of come and go we've got that sort of cycle which is something that you know human design deals with quite a lot when it comes to the emotional center uh, this is a huge theme at this particular new moon phase we are looking very much at, at sort of rooting ourselves within our own personal cycles understanding where we are in terms of the eb ebbs and flows of, of things and how that can be very very helpful because it can help us to get clear about what whether we were ready to act on something or, or whether we're kind of being too premature. Now given that Venus is making a conjunction to Mars I think it's so interesting that we've got um, as the saving symbol um, as the sacred marriage the alchemical marriage of the Sun and the Moon now the full kind of explanation of it is a fragile maiden representative of proud old blood is wed in a marriage ceremony by a priest to an eager youth of the new order and i think i discussed this um during the i think it was the lunar eclipse in capricorn um, in 2020 july of 2020 i think i talked a little bit about this idea of the sacred marriage and how you have to have the third thing mercury to sort of perform the marriage marriage ceremony you know the priest um so there needs to be a catalyst that sort of brings these two polar opposite energies together, the masculine and the feminine, the lunar and the solar. Um, but there's lots of themes here around uh, wedding ceremonies. So it could be over the next couple of weeks that you are going to a friend's wedding. Um, it's also about expressions of loyalty and allegiance, making sacred vows, which touches on this theme of commitment and um kind of making and breaking promises which was again prominent at the Capricorn supermoon um could be that you're starting a new venture um great because it's a new moon um equally you know it could have something to do with celebrations because of course weddings are a time when we tend to celebrate and weddings are kind of an interesting thing you know that they are 
not just the coming together of um, two people, but also often two families, two communities. And you, so you have this kind of the weddings on the sort of microcosmic level between two masculine and feminine energies like Venus and Mars. Um, but on the kind of macrocosmic level, um, these weddings also have much kind of higher implications or sort of um, resonances, if you like. So, you know, that's just worth, worth kind of bearing in mind. So here we have the uh, astrological chart for the new moon in Cancer. And there are a couple of things worth noting. Uh, first of all, we can see the sun and the moon in Cancer down here in the third house. Um, and they're making a trine here to Neptune. You can see this blue line with a triangle. So Neptune retrograde in Pisces, a lovely aspect, um, very flowing and harmonious. So it could be that um, you might find your intuition or your imaginative, your creative faculties really stimulated um, over this waxing moon cycle. Um, maybe you feel inspired in a way that you haven't for a long time. Um, but you do need to bear in mind that you know Neptune is retrograde so the energy tends to be more internalized when we have a planet that's retrograde either that or we are looking back to the past or resolving things from the past maybe um, you get a fresh opportunity for a creative project to sort of take off maybe you can get funding in the past or something happened um, or there was some kind of delay or block um, so it could be that at this uh, new moon you get fresh opportunities to explore that further but I think more than likely what this is going to do is get us to really tune into our intuition and our higher mind faculties so um, the the, uh, the the connection to our higher self um, and also the connection to the to the universe to the cosmos and to the subtle energies and the shifts that happen you know all around us that we may not be aware of because we're so kind of caught up in the sort of hurly-burly of life um, you know, I always like to think of, of Neptune in terms of ocean uh, tides, and it's interesting how you don't really notice that a tide is coming in. It's, it sort of happens so gradually, um, and but then all of a sudden, you know, um, the sea is sort of halfway up the beach, and I think a similar kind of thing um, may happen with this this this. Um, uh, this trying to Neptune that we may suddenly realize oh my goodness there have been all these processes sort of happening in the in the background that I haven't really been aware of but I have really made a huge shift and suddenly it you know it kind of comes into consciousness so um, that's that's um, one way that, that, that this could sort of express itself um, and then it, you know it could also be that we we um, we find ourselves um, more able to kind of tune into our compassion our empathy um, that kind of thing, um, which can, you know, it's very useful when you are, um, when you have such a sort of relationship oriented uh, lunar phase, which was, this one is, you know, that's so focused on uh, family, loved ones and sort of bosom buddies. Um, and then the other thing that's interesting about this chart is if you have a look at the ascendant descendant axis, we've got not just the north and the south node sitting across this axis, but also the fixed stars Aldebaran and Antar Antares. And of course, they were very, very prominent at that strawberry supermoon in Capricorn in June. Um, and I noticed around about the time that Mars made its T-square to Saturn and to Uranus, that um, those particular themes seem to be really activated quite strongly. And I did actually do it uh, like a, a little mini video, kind of summarizing um, some of the things that occurred to me at the time that, that came through quite strongly in that forecast. So there's a sort of summary video on my YouTube channel, um, I think on the first page, and I've also put it up on YouTube if you're interested in, in, in checking that out. You may find suddenly um, you're sort of aware of themes that um, at the time didn't seem really that relevant, um, but looking back, you know, you might kind of have a little aha moment. But what's so interesting here is that um, Aldebaran and the North Node are ascending, they're kind of moving above the horizon, and Antares and the North Node are, I mean the South Node, are descending. So in terms of astrology, we tend to bisect the astrological chart into two halves. So this top half is known as the solar or the diurnal half, and this is more about what is happening in the external world, um, in a similar way to the, the sort of division between the trigrams and a hexagram. So that the upper trigram, you know, uh, people associate with events in the external world, and the lower trigram is associated with the more private sphere, the, the lunar sphere that we have in, in the astrological chart. So very interesting overlaps there in terms of um, kind of 
traditions or conventions. So essentially what we're talking about here is the North Node and Aldebaran rising into consciousness. So this is what's coming into our collective awareness. And then Antares is what's setting. This is what we are releasing or kind of is sinking into the collective unconscious. So interesting stuff and we will discuss that more when we come to the fixed star aspects. Um, and then the last thing that I want to talk about is the Venus-Mars conjunction. Now you can see down here Venus and Mars and Leo um, sitting in the fourth house. And um, you can see that Venus is quite close to a fixed star called Dubier, which we will discuss when we come to the, the fixed star aspects. Um, so you can see that this new moon is really activating this particular um, conjunction, uh, which will perfect a couple of days later. Um, so interesting stuff. Now let's have a look at the upcoming transits for this waxing moon phase and this will give us some more information about overall kind of cosmic energy that's happening between kind of now and the full moon. This is my kind of astrological calendar for the month of July and um, this is kind of lists all the main transits that are happening throughout the month. So we're kind of at this point here with, with the new moon in Cancer and um, it's, it's really interesting because um, in terms of the next two weeks of this, this waxing moon cycle, we start off with an, the ingress of Mercury into Cancer. So really kind of highlighting all those Cancer themes that were started here with the, the, the new moon. So Mercury in Cancer, great for any kind of communication with family, traveling to see family, going to a family home, having family, you know, travel to see you, um, or just sort of uh, maybe increased toing and froing between, um, you know, between family um, when it comes to communication. And then um, on the 12th, we have Mercury making a trine to Jupiter. Wonderful flowing energy here, uh, very harmonious, great for um, any kind of presentation, for teaching, for, you know, giving a course of any kind. Um, it's also wonderful for zooming out and getting a sort of bigger perspective on things. So getting that sort of that kind of big sky or big picture thinking, taking in the full sort of spectrum of um, of things. Very good judgment, so a good time to make decisions, important decisions, or have um, contract negotiations. They should go extremely well. If you give any kind of speech, they should be particularly well received, get good publicity. Um, so very, very harmonious aspect. And then on the 13th, we move on to this conjunction between Venus and, and Mars. So this is really um, at 1432 BST, this is when this aspect becomes exact. So this could work in a number of ways. We, we are talking here about um, creativity, leadership, self-expression, um, and of course the solar plexus chakra. So this is about, all about self-confidence and um, just feeling confident about the, the your shining your light and making decisions that are kind of in your best interests. Um, so again, this is the coming together of the archetypal masculine and feminine energy. So Venus is of course in that pair, is the great sort of attractor. She's beautiful, she's attractive, she's magnetic, she draws things to her. And then we've got Mars who is the sort of the suitor, the one who pursues, who initiates, who um, ardently pursues their desire and you know so this is a great time for pursuing your passion for um, uh, any kind of creative project um, for giving birth to uh, maybe a new venture um, and of course for romantic reunions of all kinds there's no two ways about that um, so this energy will last from the 13th until around about the 22nd when Venus ingresses into into Virgo. So great, very sort of lovely, flamboyant, um, ebullient, confident, playful, happy kind of energy. So I think something to, to you know, to really look forward to. And then on the 15th, uh, the Sun perfects its trine to Neptune. So this, of course, is the perfection of the aspect that started at the new moon. Wonderful for any kind of intuition, for um, imagination and creativity. It's a time when we often get prophetic dreams. You know, the sun was considered to be the bringer of prophetic dreams by the Babylonians. So if you combine that with Neptune, which is, of course, so much about uh, magic, intuition, imagination, and uh, the magical dreamlike realms of the, uh, the superconscious, it's certainly possible that you could have um, synchronistic events or prophetic dreams happening now. It may also be that you get messages through things like films, uh, television programs, 
uh, music, that kind of thing. So t good to pay attention to the signs and synchronicities that happen on the 15th. And then the following week, we have a wonderful sextile between Mercury and Uranus. So this is wonderful for any kind of innovation or inventive thinking. Coming up with solutions to any of the problems that were raised either on the 4th with that Mars square to, to, um, to Uranus or the Venus one on the 8th. Um, good time to have any kind of brainstorming sessions, um, technical sort of um, get-togethers, uh, launches of gadgets. Um, it, it's also really nice for spontaneous trips and uh, it sometimes uh, coincides with unexpected or surprise uh, developments or messages coming in that we, you know, are kind of happy surprises if you like, unexpected blessings. So again, a lovely um, aspect to look forward to there on the 20th. And then we get to the 22nd when we enter Leo season. You can see the sun ingressing into Leo at 1526 on uh, the 22nd of July. So kick-starting Leo season, which will last for a month. On the same day, Venus enters Virgo and will make an opposition to Jupiter. So this is really about kind of balancing out any unrealistic expectations or um, tendencies to maybe... Um, be overly critical, particularly in relationships or when it comes to creativity, and also just sort of tempering any self-indulgence. You know, this is a very hedonistic conjunction here between Venus and Mars. So it could be that by the time we get to the 22nd, there's a need to sort of like, you know, uh, temper it, te sort of temper it a little bit, and and sort of maybe go on a detox, shall we say? Um, so those are kind of the main aspects because you know we come up here to the the full moon in Aquarius, which is when the, the waning moon cycle will start. So I will look at the the transits for um, for that part of of the cycle in in my next forecast. So we now move on to the fixed star aspects, and um, there are two sort of main um, aspects that I want to talk about. The first is. Uh, just going back to have a look at the the Aldebaran Antares polarity that was so strong at that Capricorn Strawberry supermoon. So as I explained when when we had a look at the chart, Aldebaran will be with the ascendant, it will be rising with the north node, and Antares will be conjunct the descendant, so it will be setting with the south node. So um, this is really telling us that that Aldebaran energy is what is kind of coming to the forefront in terms of collective awareness. So this is with the ascendant, what is paired with the ascendant, is all about holding strong principles and moral beliefs, sticking to these even when challenged. And it's very likely, given what we will learn when we come to the human design, that there may be some stresses and pressures that uh, appear from outside and the, the challenge here, the lesson here is to learn how to stick to your principles even when uh, you feel knocked um, a little bit off center perhaps due to an unexpected development. So this is all about personal strength arising from living according to your principles and a lovely continuation of the themes that we saw at the Capricorn supermoon. And then Antares of course is all about the heart of the scorpion, the nemesis, the desire for retribution and karmic justice, which as I said I thought was so strong when we came to uh, the T-square the with Mars, was uncanny. So as a heliacal setting star it's all about releasing things like intensity, tunnel vision, obsessiveness and black and white thinking. Um, so really letting go of the need to try and force things and kind of getting into more of a sort of patient um, kind of acceptance of things as they are, which is going to remove resistance. And then the second fixed star aspect that's really important is that between Venus and Mars and Dubier. Now, this is part of the constellation of Ursa Major, which is the Great Bear. And um, I think Dubia is this particular star here, which kind of takes place just between the back and the, and the neck, where the neck and the back join of of the Great Bear. So, so interesting given Aldebaran, which is all about that kind of patient, um, stalwart masculine energy, we've now got um, the Great Bear, which is all about quiet feminine strength, so patient endurance, persistence, and being in tune with the natural cycles of life. Now this is going to be a big theme, we've already seen it with the with um, the Moon in Cancer and the whole idea of the lunar cycle, you know, how we our emotions kind of wax and wane, how, um, you know, we, we need to sort of tune into that cycle because, because it will really help us to understand the flow of, of things. Um, and then paired with Mars, we are talking about 
uh, Mars is the warrior, so this is kind of mama bear er sort of energy, uh, the, the mother who is protective, fiercely protective um, of her young and of those who are weaker or unable to defend themselves. So I think that's fairly self-explanatory. Um, and then with Venus, we're talking about the, the healer who seeks the well-being of others. So somebody who helps others to um, help themselves, um, particularly children and lovers. I think this is a strong sort of fifth house kind of emphasis. Um, now, Benedict Brady says it, it's also associated with public health discussions. And of course, as the Northern Hemisphere moves into the summer months and comes out of lockdown, there's lots of discussions around uh, vaccine, herd immunity, etc., etc. And I think, um, you know, those are likely to be themes for the, the, the next two weeks, because of course, as we come up to the um, uh, up to the start of Leo season, we are also the UK certainly is coming out of you know full lockdown. Um, so I mean, very interesting stuff. I just think it's so fascinating that we've got these two quite earthy creatures, the bear and the and the bull, um, that are telling us to like basically take a chill pill, you know, to to really sort of chill out and not stress too much if things don't seem to be happening in the outside world as quickly as we would like you know I think it's always worth emphasizing that we are in retrograde season and things do tend to slow down during retrograde season and as we go more kind of internal and uh, as many in the in particularly in the northern hemisphere go on holidays so things generally just tend to slow down the pace of life slows um, but also I think um, as we'll see when we get to the human design that it really fits so nicely with this idea of gradual development which we also saw in the human design over the the um during that capricorn supermoon so interesting stuff and now of course we come on to the all important uh cheat sheet um those of you who are asking well where does this cancer new moon fall in my own chart here is your kind of um the breakdown based on your rising sign so the best way to use this is to pause the video look for your rising sign um, you know either here or here and this will tell you what house or life area is being highlighted for you <clears throat> during this new moon in other words where are the best areas to make new starts to press the reset button in terms of cycles to begin new projects or to sow seeds of intention um, yeah I mean essentially we're now talking about the opposite energies to the 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 Capricorn supermoon so for example with cancer whereas the emphasis at that supermoon was about significant significant others now the emphasis is on the first house of self-expression physical appearance and health so that's the best way to kind of read this this particular chart so I hope you have enjoyed this forecast and um, if you're interested in ordering a relationship report or reading, I do have quite a selection at the Astrology Sphere shop which you can access via my website. Um, just a heads up, I am in the process of migrating over to a new uh, shop kind of website. So if things seem a little bit awry or irregular, don't worry too much about it. Uh, there isn't anything fishy, but if you've got any queries, just um, you know email me or use the contact form and i'm happy to answer your questions um, and then to celebrate the conjunction of venus and mars happening uh, i'm going to be doing a bonus relationship reading on youtube so i'll post a pick a card reading like i did in december don't do them very often but i thought the occasion warranted it so look out for that and if you want to be notified then just subscribe and hit the bell and you should be notified when i do post that reading so something to look forward to um, my channel is now called stars and cards so you won't find it under astrology sphere just uh, look for stars and cards if you haven't already subscribed um but yes i hope you enjoy that i'm um, sending you lots of love for the upcoming waxing moon phase and um, i'll catch you again soon